Property taxes have gone up, the HOA has gone up, the insurance has gone up, and the interest rates have gone up, and the prices have gone up. So like people were renting a 2-2 for like $1,500 a month, and then when the, re the lease renewal came up, the landlord said, okay, now it's $2,200. Besides the costs, which have completely exploded after COVID, besides the costs, the ignorant comments that you're gonna hear as a black woman living in South Florida may be a reason to reconsider. I'll, 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 I'll let you know what I'm talking about. Comments like, is that your child? Because sometimes rich people hire a nanny. Rich people have problems too, but you wouldn't have to worry about that. Today's video is about, do I regret moving to South Florida as a black woman? So welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Vendries and I am a Caribbean American woman living in South Florida and traveling the world. So I help black women build wealth, travel and live richer. So if that sounds interesting to you, remember to like, comment and subscribe. I've known black women who have moved out of South Florida because they couldn't take the the ignorant comments and they said this is just not a place where they would want to raise kids. I was in a restaurant with my family and this guy walks up to the table and starts telling us you know all the problems of being rich and he was a little intoxicated I will say that to his to his defense but I don't need to tell you what race this person was. You can guess and whatever you guess, that's probably the truth. So he goes on and on about, you know, there's taxes and there's this and there's that. And then he ends the conversation with, but you guys wouldn't have to worry about that. Who, what, where are we? What, where, where are we? you're in a restaurant or you're at a bar and you overhear people saying i wouldn't want to be black or someone asks you were you devastated when you saw her talking about my daughter was i devastated when i saw her color her pigmentation at birth like who asked somebody something like that these are the kind of ignorant comments that you're gonna hear living in south florida so just be prepared for that the other thing you need to be prepared for is being the only. So being the only black woman, being the only black person in a restaurant, in a bar, uh, if you could go to a restaurant and, and it could be filled with patrons and you might find that nobody looks like you. At this point, I've gotten used to walking into a place and being the only. I'm not saying that it happens every time. I'm just saying it's something that will happen, that the only black people you see are you and the people you came with. And that's just something, if you're not accustomed to that, if you're from a very diverse city, or if you're from a city like Atlanta and you move here, just know it's going to be different. You might also have some questionable experiences. A waiter might be rude to you. A, a waiter might leave kind of quick. They might be short and, and with their tone, or they might take a long time to service your table. And you, you know, you wonder like, is this because I'm black, or or is everyone getting this kind of treatment? And then you look around and you're like, oh no, everyone is not getting this kind of treatment. That's the kind of thing you might experience here. Stay tuned for the cost aspect of moving to Florida. We're gonna get to that later in the video. I didn't care that I was gonna move to Florida and make less. I was so over New York, and I'm actually gonna do a video about why I moved out of New York. But the traffic, you know, I would sit in traffic for hours, like literally multiple hours on a Friday going into the Lincoln or going into the Midtown Tunnel the the parking there's no parking ever i would literally like if i had to leave my house on a weekend i had to make a decision like is it worth losing my parking spot that would be part of my decision making you know how sometimes you think oh how much is it going to cost you know, what time is it a part of my decision making was whether or not i wanted to get give up my parking spot and it just wasn't the life for me it was expensive it was stressful it was gloomy I got seasonal depression 
Florida is definitely like a much better state for me in that regard. But, okay, the pay. So everybody knows that South Florida or Florida in general isn't like the highest paying state. This isn't New York, this isn't New Jersey. You're not gonna make, unless you're in a field that's, that's like a doctor, lawyer, unless you're in a high paying field, this isn't the highest paying state, right? So when I moved here from New York, my family thought I was crazy. They were like, you are gonna move to Florida? Why would you do that? Do you have a job? You don't have a job in Florida, but you move into Florida, that is foolishness. No one moves to Florida without a job. You gotta move to Florida. Do you have a job? You not have a job. You not have a job and you gotta move to, that is a retirement state, you know. You're not in retirement. Where you move for? Why would you move from New York? So that was their, <laughs> that was their sentiments. But I moved here without a job. I took a risk and I moved and it, I, I did take a, a large pay cut, but it worked out for me because I was able to become a realtor and I invested in real estate. So I was able to supplement my income. So I moved here in 2010, which was during the great recession right after the housing crash of 2008. So when I moved here, it was a buyer's market. Uh, there were foreclosures everywhere. And it was just a totally different market than it is now. Uh, townhouse was around $100,000. And I'm talking about like a nice townhouse that was maybe you know built in 2004. And I moved here in 2010. So it was six years old. You could get like a six year old property three bedroom, two bath, upstairs, downstairs, garage, two, you know, two, three car driveway for a hundred thousand dollars. One hundred around maybe a hundred and eight, a hundred and eight thousand dollars. For a single family home, like a four bedroom. Oh, it's a little windy here. I'll put a link in the description to my video on real estate investing and also on becoming a realtor. So that's something you can check out. I also have a course on your keys to wealth, which you can find more information on my website. It's just simple steps to living richer. Okay, so I had to wait for the wind to pass. So yeah, you could get a townhouse for like a hundred, hundred and eight thousand dollars single family homes like no attached walls single family four bedroom two bathroom you could get those when i moved here for like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars and covid happened yeah it got crazy so covid happened and you know since 2010 to 2020 the house the home prices were steadily rising it's not like they stayed at a hundred grand right they rose uh steadily for 10 years so by 2020 they were in the 200s they were um you know maybe high 200s 250 to 260 270 280 for a townhouse and for a single family you could find a single family in in the threes then COVID happened and everybody moved here with their remote job and they were paying whatever. They were, it didn't matter what it, what it was appraised for. It didn't matter what it was worth. They were like, is it worth 250? I'll give you 300. Is it worth 300? I'll give you 400. Like it was just insane what people were paying. And so the rents went up. The rents when I first moved here were like $1,200 for a two bedroom, two bathroom. You know, now they are maybe 2,500, 2,600. The homes, you know, they went from 100 to now town townhomes are like 450. Yeah, 450 for a townhouse. For a single family house, half a million and up. So it is not the same Florida that I moved to. So you definitely need to be aware that the cost of living from that aspect, from the home prices have gone way up now let's talk about the homeowners insurance this has nothing to do with covid in the last couple of years we've had hurricanes and so insurance companies have been paying out claims 
for damages as a result of hurricanes. And so these insurance companies have said, wait a minute, if we're paying out all these claims, then we need to increase the premium. And so premiums have gone up. Homeowners insurance has gone from maybe 1200 per year to 2500 per year. So double what people were paying before. And it is significant increase when you're also factoring in all of the other increases like HOAs. HOAs have gone up. They used to be 100, 200. Now they're like 400, some places $1,000 every month for homeowners association. And they say that their costs have gone up. Their costs to maintain, their costs for uh, you know lawn care, their costs for insurance in the common areas to insure the pool, to insure the gym, to insure the roof in the common areas. They say those costs have gone up, and so we need to raise our fees. So not only are the property taxes going up because the home values have gone up because of COVID and because of just inflation in general. So the property taxes have gone up, the HOA has gone up, the insurance has gone up, and the interest rates have gone up, and the prices have gone up. So if you're moving here now and looking to purchase a home, it's a much different market than it was even just a couple of years ago, even just maybe five years ago, it's a much different market. So that is something that you do need to keep in mind. This is not the place to go where you can say, I'm gonna move there and um, you know, I'm gonna buy a house cash, not unless you have a half a million dollars. Directly following COVID, I heard stories of rents going up 50%. Like people were renting a 2-2 for like $1,500 a month. And then when the re the lease renewal came up, the landlord said, okay, now it's 2200 That's a big jump from fifteen to 2200 That's an extra $700 a month that you have to pay or move. And then when you move, you're paying the same thing anyway. So you're just paying extra money. I think on average, people here are paying about a thousand dollars more than they were 15 years ago per month this is no longer the state where you can come and purchase a home for a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars this market has become unaffordable for many first-time home buyers so we're in a situation where the cost of housing here in south florida is nearly the same as what it is in the north but the wages are quite different. Our teachers are not making what you know, teachers make in New York or our police officers are not making what they make in New York. If the prices were what they are now, when I was looking to move to Florida, I could not have moved to Florida. I could not have moved here and bought a property, bought a, a, a townhouse for 450,000. I moved here because I had a hundred grand and houses were a hundred grand. And so I said, I could put down 20%, that's 20 grand, I got that. And then I can finance the rest and be comfortable, have a job and be comfortable. Now, I wouldn't I wouldn't move here if, if I was moving here for the first time. I, Florida wouldn't be it right now for me. As someone who already lives here, I have the benefit of, of equity. I have the benefit of capitalizing on the low cost when I moved here and the appreciation that has happened since then. So even with the ignorant comments and the initial low pay and the explosion in the cost of living, I still love living in South Florida. It is a way more relaxed state than the other states that I've lived in. And it's so close to Mexico and the Caribbean and South America. So someone who loves to travel will definitely love it here. And check out my video to Cartagena and to the Bahamas. And by the way, the Bahamas is only 30 minutes from Miami International Airport. It is super close.